So hello everyone, I'm going to start off right away. I think we are very close to lunch time, so I get how it feels right now. Um, welcome. Um, just to get to the, to the set of questions that I have in mind, and of course the people that I spoke to, I think commerce over time changed where we purchased our products. And mobile commerce transformed how we purchased. So my first question is for you, Tejas. Uh, you know, mobile commerce, I think the stats say so, is that it contributes or it controls two-thirds of the global commerce market. What do you think has led to the stupendous growth of mobile commerce in India? Just to set the context, yeah. of course. Yeah, uh, thanks for this question, Hiro. I think uh, quite relevant to set the context for the uh, discussion. I think, uh, and th the things I'm going to speak, everyone knows it, but you know, it's hard hitting every time you go to this fax, right? Uh, so I think mobile commerce, uh, there are three factors, I think, uh, broadly speaking, uh, which uh, has led to a stupendous growth uh, and all has to do with access. So I think first is access to smartphones. I think uh, 750 million plus uh, in India are using smartphones. Uh, out of which only 200 are online shoppers, right? Uh, and uh, almost 90% of them are mobile mobile commerce uh, shoppers. So that's 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 the numbers out there. Uh, second is access to internet. I think last five years, every one of us has seen how Geo has unlocked that wave. Uh, to all of us, like everyone is on the internet, everyone consumes a lot of data. Uh, so that's the second uh, bit. And the third is, uh, is ease of payments or access to payments. I think India's invention to the world is UPI, right? So uh, it's made the payment so easy that everyone is comfortable transacting, which was a biggest pain point prior to the explosion. And of course, to top on all of this, I think uh, the pandemic has really turbocharged uh, this growth uh, uh, into like next five years. I think we can see a great growth and we have seen a lot of shoppers coming in the last two years because of unavailability of offline retail for a brief period. So, there. Yeah. So, you do see that in HUL as well? Uh, not... Like, yes, we did see that uh, major shift uh, in 2020 where like people are not going to a general trade shows, but uh, in the current year, it's it's like people have moved back to offline retail as well, but they do have an option now and they are comfortable transacting few things online. So while they might uh, go for a top up to a top up to their regular purchase on general trade, but if they are planning a grocery mission or like a payday, like whenever they get their salaries, they might plan a bigger chunk online. So that we are seeing a shift but uh, not to the extent of uh, what smartphones or fashion has seen. So fashion is 60% online right now. Uh, but grocery or consumer product is still 5 to 7%. But that still, you know, has scope to grow. Thanks, Tejas. Karthik, next is for you, I mean, Kotak Mahindra Bank. So I just wanted to know as a marketer of Kotak Mahindra Bank, which is one of the reputed banks uh, in the country, and uh, given the rise of uh, mobile commerce, how as a marketer are you juggling strategies, you know, to reach your audience? And what are the opportunities and challenges you have come across? You can share some examples that would be sure. great. Sure, sure. Thank you for that, Hiru. And uh, thank you also for rescuing us from being flamed for not being a diverse panel. I realized that after we came up on stage. <laughs> so, uh, because banking has actually, ironically, been digital for a very long time, which people don't necessarily realize easily. In some ways, we've always been completely digital. We became, Kotak particularly became mobile first as early as 2011. Now it's like 12 years ago, 11 years ago almost. Uh, but of course, we see ourselves first as enablers of commerce, enablers of mobile commerce as well, because we are essentially the payment pipe. Uh, he kindly mentioned UPI as a transformative tool, and we've embraced tools like UPI. We, we also saw a huge spurt happened when uh, regulations changed on the back of uh, demonetization, where we were able to acquire customers purely online, purely from the mobile, uh, because all you have to do is enter your Aadhaar number and your PAN card number and Bob your uncle, you have a fully functional bank account running, which is like a three-minute process. 
given those that India stack uh, magic that happened, because of that, we are at the forefront of uh, mobile commerce, even ourselves. And we are doing that apart from being enablers to all our friends over here, we are also seeing that our ability to cross-sell or to uh, uh, extend more value products beyond just the bank account to our own customers. For example, on the back of our product 811, it's a basic vanilla savings account product, which is what you can acquire in three minutes. But as soon as we acquired that, now today, just like any other mobile commerce player, we also are able to mine the rich data we, are, we have access to, your transaction data. We are able to personalize your offers to you. We know that you like Swiggy more than you like Zomato or vice versa and so on. We are able to do, use all of that, not just for our own purposes, to be able to sell you the next best product you need from our own portfolio, but also from the portfolio of our partners where we are able to present the best deals, the best alliances, uh, feed your habits in a really personalized manner. Girish was talking about that in some sense earlier, which is about me being able to know you, but know you in a sense that is of service to you, not know you in the sense of being like a snoop on you. So when I'm of service to you, I think you value it, and that's what we have largely leveraged, and that is working gangbusters for us. So I'll pause now. But are you seeing any challenges? While, of course, uh, there are a lot of opportunities ahead. Any challenges that you um, have encountered? So yeah. As a marketeer, I will say, uh, and this is something I think uh, Mr. Tyagarajan also alluded to, uh, I'm seeing a huge shift of money to performance marketing and uh, I am a huge critic of performance marketing because it is fundamentally, it is rolling our sleeves up and uh, getting down and dirty. It does deliver business, it is efficient, but it is hurting brands. And I think we're commoditizing brands the more the needle is moving towards performance. So when the ratio is dominantly in favor of performance work, the brand is going to be commoditized and that I feel is the biggest challenge that marketers have and I am facing it too. Interesting. Uh, my next question is for you, Sadesh. Uh, given the rise in mobile commerce, of course, uh, we're all talking about it, how important has it become for a brand to invest in mobile user experience? That's one. Secondly, do you think augmented reality or immersive technologies in any way will help to fuel mobile commerce growth even further? So, so one particular thing uh, is the immense growth of uh, e-commerce as we call it. Right now it's more of uh, e-commerce on a marketplace. So I think it's very important for brand to help the consumer uh, get that experience on their own brand website which will actually boost the, uh, the entire e-commerce bit because right now uh, whenever somebody is buying a product on a marketplace or for that matter with a BFSA category like us on aggregator, uh, we are not owning the customer. So we are not giving him the experience of that particular brand. So I don't know whether he'll stay with me for the next particular uh, purchase or not. And hence it's important for us to give him that experience. And uh, the thing which you just mentioned, augmented reality, uh, these are just uh, ways in which we can help him understand things better. Uh, we always say future is mobile. I think it's present. Present uh, in, in, the, in the current scenario, we, uh, when we're saying two-third of things are on mobile or transactions happening on mobile, uh, why are we saying it's the future? It's, it's currently there. Uh, currently, the approach should always be a mobile first kind of approach. Uh, in fact, uh, things like uh, gaming or in-gaming purchases, uh, I was having a conversation with one of my friend uh, and he just mentioned that uh, last year the transaction rates were somewhere around 1% of the total gaming uh, audience which he has and that 1% has now moved up to 25 to 3% which you can see there's a 2x, 3x growth already happening on those numbers so people are moving to that particular phase where they want to transact. It's just how you want to place your brand in that particular uh, scenario and then try to give him that, that experience. Uh, for me, uh, my majority of my business comes from a B2B kind of a setup. So for me, my end consumer is, uh, is also uh, slightly, I would say, my uh, partner who's selling my, my products and services. So we are trying to give him the best of the services, not just by uh, helping him get the transaction online, but at the same point of time, helping him sell my product uh, pretty well. So whatever arms and ammunitions he requires 
to go into the market and get that particular customer for me. I think that's, that's, that's where we are investing more monies on. And that's where I think everybody should invest their monies and try to give uh, him that power to sell your products properly. So overall, it's the present. Uh, and if you're not doing it right now, I think it's going to be difficult for you to get anything in the future. Sure. Kathy, do you want to add something on to that, to mobile user experience? I'm, by the way, one of your customers as well, and I use the app, so... <laughs> okay. First, I'm elated. Second, I'm going to be wary. If there's a customer service complaint coming, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> no, but you have my number, so you should call me anytime you have a problem. So, uh, from the customer experience point of view, I think uh, there are things to be done. One of the problems with the fact that the customer is completely moved to mobile, which is positive because everything is a click away. And I think uh, the reason why, if I, if I were to read why UPI and even something like ONDC is happening in this country, is there are two actually fundamental reasons for it. One is we know that when we have to pull cash out of our wallet and hand it across to somebody, there is actually a deep physical pain we feel. So separate, parting with cash is very hard. The credit card companies learned very quickly that swiping a card was much easier. Now, clicking a button is the easiest thing in the world. There is no pain whatsoever. What that is going to do for this country is explode GDP on the one hand. The second reason why UPI is happening is also that now every single rupee of revenue of every single trader and seller is trackable, so tax revenues will go up. Both these things are incredibly positive for the nation as a whole. In this, the customer is benefiting obviously also, but she's also hurting. She will, we will end up becoming a conspicuous consumption country, I think in the less, less than five years to 10 years from here. Luckily for us, India is this massive time machine where there are people who have not consumed anything for the longest time, they are just getting on the consumption bandwagon. There are also people at the other extreme who look like Americans now, where we buy much more than we can ever eat, or much more than we can ever wear, etc. So I think there will be social fabric problems that will emerge because of this spectrum, and all of us will have roles to play and responsibilities and accountability, and we will have blood on our hands eventually as well. So we'll have to watch out. And I think this is something that uh, tangential Anurag alluded to in the morning, and I want to alert us to that also. Anurag talked about sleep, and one of the Dynata statistics that I noticed was that people are put together 10 hours on the mobile phone every day. Now you have to sleep 8 hours to be healthy, you have to work 8 hours to earn an honest day's wage. Where the hell is family or friends or anything else if all of that is going to the mobile? I think we are in a dangerous space and we all have to take pause also. And I know the previous panel spoke a lot about how there is the opportunity exploding to advertise. But I also feel that as marketeers, we have a responsibility to say, hey, are we doing too much? Are we hurting more than we are helping? We have to be mindful. I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vinay, the next one. Uh, you know, uh, we spoke at the backstage a lot about message bird and how mobile commerce is not limited to apps or marketplaces, but to unlimited to mobile itself, right? Uh, given that, how do you think, and do you firstly think, tier two, tier three cities are adding to the growth of mobile commerce and will continue to add in the years ahead? Uh, I feel it's already happening, but do you think it will continue to have and at greater levels, that's one. Um, secondly, how do you think a marketer will then maneuver strategies to you know, address the diverse consumer? profile that they might have. Thank you. So I'm going to take two cues from Tejas and Karthik. One is 700 million mobile phone users, but 200-ish million unique commerce buyers. Second is uh, the Kotak experience, probable customer service complaint coming down the line. So if you actually look at this, and if you look at tier two, tier three, and even tier one or urban, if we may call it, the consumer is everywhere, which means the moment you have a device, you are a consumer, we all are, and that's not 200 million, that's 700 million. That shift has happened where businesses need to take their business to the customer, not the other way around, is you tell them to come where I am, which is a retail store, which is a website, which is an app. If I want to make a dinner plan in WhatsApp, today I can buy a product, consume a product, and raise a customer service, take it inside a channel like WhatsApp. 
If I'm on Instagram and I see an ad, I can buy that ad, product there. So I think uh, to your question of scaling, tier two, tier three, tier, yes, it's going to happen because you don't have to go in and be physically or digitally present. Customer is already present in these forums. We have to recognize that it's not one strategy that my website's gonna work. Yes, it's a great platform. My app's gonna work. Yes, it's a good approach. But be where your customer is rather than get your customer to where you are. And I think that's changing. Brands that recognize are gonna classically succeed. I'll give a small example of a leading computer manufacturing brand, global brand. Their biggest problem statement on customer service was, I'm present across 100 odd countries, various products. We simply give, customers want to contact us. How do I get them to contact me and solve their problem, upsell? Simply put a QR code at the back, scans open WhatsApp. Now you imagine you've given hundreds of millions of customers of that brand the power to talk to the brand, address PII data, first, first party data, and consume a product or service from the brand from the mobile itself, which is 700 million now in India. Interesting. Um, Shivam, I think Karthik, uh, Karthik spoke a lot about uh, performance, so my question is directed to that now. Um, do you think, uh, you know, mobile commerce, or what impact would mobile commerce have on, in, on ad revenues in the years ahead, one? Secondly, um, are there any ways to improve mobile commerce performance? If so, what are your recommendations, which you perhaps might be doing for your brand yourself?
thank Shivam. I'm cognizant of the time, and as I know, I know lunch is to follow. So I'll, I'll take up a last question, which is actually addressed to all of you all. Um, predict the present, I wouldn't say the future also. Predict the present and the future of mobile commerce. If you had to do that, what are the trends you foresee? And what is the future you foresee for mobile commerce? Just a note from each one of you all would help. I, I think it's simple what I said, I'll echo. Be where your customer is. Your customer's already on the mobile, but the channels have changed. Be where they are on their channels versus asking them to come where you, you want them to be. And then it just explodes the whole world of mobile commerce. So, uh, as you mentioned, the customer is, is, is on the platform which, wherein he's having a lot of distractions. So, try and give your messaging uh, as quickly as possible. Try to make him comfortable with your particular medium. And I think that's the key for your mobile to be the future successful. Um, I think a uh, lot of, uh, we all like to shop on our own, right? But I think lo large part of new consumers are not tech savvy. They, they don't know how to search. Uh, I think a lot of assisted selling slash buying is going to come up soon and it's already exploding in terms of social commerce that you know, people are helping others buy, uh, they are showing how it looks when, when you use that product or you try that product. I think that is something which will help, uh, you know, unlock the new shoppers and, you know, driving them back again. Because right now, I think most platforms are getting those shoppers for the first time, but, you know, having them come back is something which is what the social angle will give. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to say, but I'll say only one thing. I look forward to the possibility that micro entrepreneurs like for example handloom weavers from maheshwar from sanganer from uh, mangalgiri will all have a fully national market without too many intermediaries in the way and that will be wonderful for india so that's one prediction i like Thanks. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think a lot has been said already, but I would just like to add that, you know, a couple of things that again are emerging and would would see explosion uh, uh, in the near future, uh, in my opinion, is live commerce. Uh, again, that's something that is being, uh, that is happening on social media platforms, but on e-commerce platforms also. I think that is something that is exploding in India and it's doing well. Um, in addition to that, I think uh, for the future, right, I mean, uh, a lot is being said about the metaverse and uh, you know, what it, what's in store for that. I think that's what is there in store is still ambiguous. But I think if there is a possibility for M-Commerce to give live virtual, uh, you know, f uh, experiences to consumers of uh, shopping uh, in a mall, right? Mall-like experiences to consumers on M-Commerce. I think that could be something that could be explored. I personally don't, uh, don't think that it's going to happen in a jiffy. It's going to be something that is urgent or this is, this is something that is immediate could happen over the long term, but like you said, uh, maybe trends for the future that could be explored. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Just to, you know, just to summarize and leave on a fun note, if you had to think of just one word that plays on your mind when you think of M-commerce or mobile commerce, what is that one word? Quick. This is like... Ease. Money. <laughs> Accessibility. Convenience. Everywhere. Well, that, that sums it up for us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being so spotty, candid, and insightful. Thank you, guys. <laughs>